Hey guys, it's Dante at Ferrigno Freedom Channel. Welcome back. I'm glad you're here. I wanted to be able to come share something with you real quick because I haven't been able to do any recording when I went on my ruck this morning. I haven't had a chance to record much of anything that I can put together quickly. I've been working on a pretty large video that I'm doing something for the first time ever where I actually do a review on a book that I talked about on the Ferrigno Freedom Facebook page the other day. But uh, I got a lot of editing to do on that because I've never done anything quite like this before and I was trying to work from notes. So I'm um, hopefully, I gotta work this evening, so hopefully sometime tomorrow I'll have time to edit that footage for you. But meanwhile, I wanted to come talk to you about something that I shared on Facebook a few weeks back or a few days back that I thought was pretty interesting and that I'd like to be able to share with you here on the channel. You know how on Facebook you get Facebook memories that shows something you posted a long time ago? Well, I saw something that posted before I started Lion Diet that deals with something I was going through that I wanted to share with you. Let me go ahead and bring this up real quick. In the post on September 19th, today's the 29th, so it was 10 days ago. I don't even remember this incident when I look back on all the troubles I had with my gut from at least 2018 through 2020. The worst of them occurred in late 2020. And that's the one I remember where I sat there with a doctor asking me what I wanted them to do for me as if I was making all this up. It's interesting to see this in my Facebook memories because it's all a blur of pain during the few years before I started Lion Diet and the fog finally lifted. And here's what I had to say back on September 19th of 2019. Not big about posting too much really personal stuff here, but I can't answer everybody individually. I haven't really slept more than half an hour in a spurt or a few minutes at a time in the past 60 hours. But I'm so grateful for all the concern. I want to share this with my friends. Then I'm getting some rest tonight, at least, I hope. My wife and mother-in-law are not feeling well right now. Please keep them in your prayers. I'm out of the hospital. I was in for a mild fever, extreme dehydration, and severe intestinal pain. From what I can deduce from the doctor's wishy-washy answers, I had a stomach bug that hit my already suffering intestines like a freight train, and dehydration from the subsequent loss of fluids exacerbated my illness to a near-critical point. Then large amounts of stomach acid were dissolving parts of me instead of my stomach contents and therefore causing my pain. They gave me something to treat the acid about 15 hours after I arrived, which made that night a longer one than the continued loss of fluids would have. Did I mention they treated the cause of the loss of fluids 15 hours later also? There may have been a medical reason not to treat these symptoms earlier, or even not to treat the pain itself, but it looked more like they had no clue what to do, or at least the doctor wasn't available to tell them what to do. I don't know. Either way, it's over. It was a rough stay at Phoebe, but I'm glad I made it out alive. Now if the insurance verification that has already been initiated about six times in the past five weeks from Phoebe had gone through again when I was on the phone with Phoebe pre-registering yesterday, Phoebe's the name of the hospital, I would be getting the last test I've been prescribed to take tomorrow morning. But since it didn't, I don't know why, and they apparently don't know why, they made it seem like my insurance was out to lunch when they called for verification. I am now getting my final test on October 19th instead of 11 hours from now. This means I have almost three more weeks of suffering with the still yet undiagnosed issue they have been steadily working on while the bean counters come to agreement on the final test. I will be calling every day to try to get an earlier appointment, but you kind of think they'd have me on some kind of waiting list at least. But alas, Phoebe is little more than a quasi-government institution and therefore a de facto government entity, therefore not compassionate, but that is the nature of government help. If you're one of the people who think that government should run our health care, be solely responsible for our personal defense and be continuously violating our individual rights for a myriad of other helpful things the government promises because you've convinced yourselves to believe the government is benevolent, then you are in for a ter terrible surprise when your beloved socialism takes full effect. I don't criticize young people for thinking socialism is the answer. We've been sending our kids to brainwashing schools for the past, oh, say, 50 years or so, when most, not all, of the professors have been spoon-feeding our young people with things I grew up knowing were rubbish. I was surprised when I got to college and a fellow student defended socialism in a rebuttal to a paper that I wrote, then had to present to the class. I didn't even know how there could be a debate when the historical overall outcomes of the two economic systems of socialism and capitalism were compared objectively. I pray they come to their senses. It's the older ones who either do know better 
or use this mind-bending version of truth to obtain power over the lives of others, or the older ones who don't know better because they want to believe in a humanistic view that there is a panacea man can discover to solve all man's ills. For the former, there is no hope. You see them in the halls of government every day. They're junkies for power, and they have a straight shot of their favorite drug to the spinal cord every day. Yet I still pray for them. Who am I to write off any soul? But for the latter, for the younger ones I mentioned earlier, there is hope. Use your objectivity and put your emotions in check while you inform yourselves about the facts of history and think. Then you can come to a truly rational conclusion. This will not be easy. Rationalizing and rational thinking are polar opposites, and it takes discipline to let your emotions do the appreciating in your soul, and let your rational mind do the thinking. Also, most of you need to turn off the news for a while, and let the spin doctor's haze clear. Sorry friends, that includes Fox News too. Don't worry, you'll be able to peek in once in a while to see what they're babbling about today, but a few of you normally rational people may need to ground yourselves in some objectivity as well. There are far fewer talking heads on either side of the arguments that are actually on your side. Anyway, off my soapbox now. I surely didn't intend to go there with this. This was supposed to be a quick health update for my friends so that I might get a bit fewer kind and loving phone calls about my health, but nevertheless disturbing to my potential rest. And it was also meant to thank all of you for the calls, texts, and prayers. I am truly grateful for each and every one, but I do need some rest. It's apparent that lack of sleep and the recent reminders of my mortality have me a little more verbal than normal. Please forgive me. It all comes with my love for those of you who took the time to read this. Keep the prayers coming. You're in mine as well. I wanted to share that because it kind of opened my eyes to something that I had forgotten about. I had forgotten how long and how much pain I had been in. I kind of only remembered the last year of the things that I dealt with. And it just goes to show how changing the way you eat, changing your perspective on what you're putting in your body, what you're putting in your mind, what you're putting into your soul, all of these things have a huge effect on you. My body was being neglected because I was eating foods that weren't foods. And by going to the lion diet and all ruminant water and salt way of eating, it has just changed everything. And it can change everything for you. I didn't used to want to exercise, now I make the time to exercise. Even though I basically work two jobs and my family life is very full, I try to squeeze in as much time with my wife as I can. Here we are watching football together, we're watching some news on football anyway because her Lions won last night and my Dol Dolphins won last week. We're all excited about what's going to happen on Sunday between the Dolphins and the Bills. But I said, you know what? This is a perfect time to not only spend time with my wife, but to get those squats in I didn't get to do in this morning. This is how easy it is to keep yourself healthy. Just take the time in between those little things. Make sure you're getting the exercise you need. Make sure you're eating the food you need to eat that allow you to be able to exercise. And that's the key factor that's going to make the big difference for you. If you're working on your body, your spirit, and your mind, you're going to achieve the things that you want to achieve. You're going to be able to overcome the obstacles that are stopping you from attaining the things you want from this life, from having that meaning that you're looking for. And it's got to happen on all three levels. That's just my thought. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I'll see you next time. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat? When I'm editing, sometimes it's really hard to have time to get up and make something to eat. That's why I love carnivore crisps. I keep a bag handy just in case I get a little hungry so that I don't have to be distracted from my work. I can stop for a moment, have some delicious food that is perfectly on my way of eating, that has been so good for my body and so good for my mind. Beef brisket is my favorite by far of all the carnivore crisps. Get yours at carnivorecrisps.com and use my coupon code DANTE, D-A-N-T-E, to save 10% on your order. I hope you love them as much as I do.